Hi, this is Jacob Jenko with the Passive Solar Greenhouse, November 4th, 2020. I'm going to discuss the heating and cooling and the watering system here. So the geothermal system consists of 11 6-inch corrugated pipes going 9 foot underground. They go 40 foot outside the greenhouse, loop back up to the second riser. So we have first riser right here with two pipes hooked up. So this, I don't know if you can see this black six inch corrugated is a shell ran pipe. It's ran, you can see it coming up here. It's ran along this north bed here. all the way down, loops around right up by the stone, comes back and ends up right here. So what this does is while we're cooling during the hot either summer or right now it's still pretty hot in here, um, it pushes air through the shallow ground so it's gonna heat up this ground. So we got the second riser down here, which is running. So this riser runs for the cooling effect. And what we have, we have two pipes running out of this negative pressure box. We have this aluminum pipe that runs to the wall transfer. So the wall has this terracotta tile here that you can see by this is hollow. So we are pushing air through this wall when we're heating the system. So we're taking hot air and pushing it through this whole entire back wall, which is really gonna help just keep everything warm, use the soil, it'll be a giant radiator. Um, and then we're doing the same thing on this side. This side, I could only get it hooked up. So then when we run the exhaust fan, um, it draws through the wall but we might eventually uh, set it up a little bit different. So this six inch corrugated pipe runs all the way along the peak here. I don't know if you can see it. And what that does is it takes the hot air from the day. It's a negative pressure box. So I'll show you, I got a thermostat in here. got about 85 degrees. Well, it's pulling 85 degree air underground, helping charge up for the cold of the winter. And when we're cooling, or excuse me, when we're heating during the cold of the winter, this box will be running. So right now, during the cooling process, a fan is blowing from the east end and running to this, and this has positive pressure right now. So when we're heating, this is gonna be a negative pressure box. So that pipe I showed you earlier, that'll be sucking, so it'll be sucking air from the ground from the middle of the greenhouse and then this tube right here that's ran along the ceiling is going to be drawing air from the peak but it's probably going to be a little bit colder because it's so close to uh, the plastic so and then we also have another six inch corrugated that runs just through this bed about three feet down all the way to the other end right now that's hooked up so we have a negative pressure box up top and when we turn the exhaust fan on it draws air through the bed and it does get exhausted so we have the same setup over here to draw air through this terracotta pipe it's got a dryer vent
I'll show you some of the system for the rainwater. So we have this tank right here, 250 gallon tank. It's piped in to terracotta tile that we found when we originally dug the greenhouse. And then it also has a pipe right here that we have hooked up to this timer that is hooked up to the cysteine well outside. So we'll fill this about five minutes every day. So we have constant pressure in there. And what happens is it goes from that, that tank back there and it goes to this, which we can control. We can shut it off so it goes directly to the lower tank. Um, or we can leave it on and that'll allow water to just slowly soak through this hose and into the ground, which has been working really great so far. So the other component of the rainwater system is right here. So we have just kind of like a traditional sub pump in there um, with a bin. So we didn't have the kind of the height that we did at the other end, so we couldn't just feed it directly in there. So we had to, the rainwater from terracotta tile, that more terracotta tile we found out in the field, feeds into here, and then the sub pump pumps it up to the top tank, and then through these soaker hoses like I explained, and down to this bottom tank, which is hard to see here. Um, and then when those two tanks are full, in a big rain event, we have this hose right here, that has ran along this whole north bed with eighth inch holes drilled into it. So when we get a large rain event, all the water will just soak into this bed, which is usually a fairly dry bed because it doesn't get any of the condensation from the plastic. So we do have a pressurized system for the upper beds. So we have just uh, adjustable emitters here, which have been working really great. We have those on both of the top beds. So right now we're running off our cistern well. We also have city water available, but we're gonna try not to use it. So I'll show you the cistern well. So this is a cistern well. Got just a simple bobber in there to see the water level here. So this is the little water mark I marked. So we don't have a whole ton of water here, but I found out it's plenty. If we run the system for about 10 minutes, it only drops down about two inches. So we got plenty of water. So two main drain tile that run right through the greenhouse all the way down to here are feeding all our water needs right now. View of the front of the greenhouse here. A lot of recycled material. We got some wood here. Uh, it came from a terracotta factory. It's from the early 1900s. And these beans are all larch here. And we got our automatic opener. As you can see here, just controlled by uh, the heat here. So that'll open up and we're hoping that'll let in some pollinators during the summertime. We do have a locking system I made, pretty simple. It's 
the cable attached to this door. So then the really cold winter, we can really pull that as tight as we can and get that sealed up. So then uh, we don't have any leaking. So as you can see, a lot of condensation here. We only have one single layer of poly here, um, which doesn't really have the best insulation properties, but we're letting as much light as we possibly can get through. Um, we're just south of Buffalo, New York, so we do get quite a few cloudy days and we don't get a lot of sunshine, so we're gonna try to get as much sunshine in as possible um, to counteract the kind of inefficiency of this plastic, we were considering putting a thermal curtain up top so we could go from the peak here right to this snow support, um, put a whole thermal curtain all the way down, hopefully something, you know, R6, um, and that will still allow the winter sun to come in and hit all the plants but it'll give us uh, some sort of dome or cap on top to really help hold that heat uh, during the cold winter. So we're at about 6B here. We'll get down to about negative 20 at the coldest. Um, so I'm, my goal is to keep it above freezing in here with uh, a little supplemental heat besides the geothermal system. And we got another small vent here. And we got caps off for now, but that's going to be our winter vent. And then we do have, I'm not sure if you can see. Um, yeah, it's kind of hard. But uh, our winter solstice, equinox, and summer solstice. So give an idea. Right now, right by the cold door, we got about 65 degrees. The thermostat over here is reading oh, 93. All right, it's a little bit in the sun. We might have to move that. But uh, so far, everything's growing great in here. We seem to love this. So we're hoping, hoping to ripen up some tomatoes before it gets too cold and maybe uh, just try to keep them living over the winter and uh, get through that low light period and then hopefully come into January we can start getting some tomatoes. But, uh, hope you guys liked the video. Let me know if you got any questions or comments. Have a good one.